Welcome to the 3 Marker Challenge! It's been quite some time since my last Marker Challenge. I did about 5 or something. And since always using the same markers, um, specifically Copic markers, over and over again, it's not a real challenge for me anymore. So I decided to spice it up and use these pretty cheap markers named Twin Markers from Deco Time, which I got from the Action Store in Berlin. A set of 12 markers only cost about 4 euros, which is insane. If you want more information of these markers, make sure to watch my twin marker video, which is linked in the description box down below. So, yeah, if you saw yesterday's video, you already know which colors I picked and that there will be also a two marker challenge and a one marker challenge. So if you want to see what kind of funny color combinations I picked for the two and one marker challenge, uh, just watch yesterday's video. And to make it up first, I know there will be always people who will say, uh, you're doing it all wrong. You drew the outlines before or after picking the colors. How dare you to use outlines? You cheated because you used white ink for highlights and so on. But well, there is no specific rule about this challenge, except for using three markers. Everything else you add or take away to make this challenge more challenging, for example, draw with or without outlines, draw without a sketch or use the three markers with your butt is up to you to make it more challenging or more fun. So there are no limits. And I think the most important thing is just to have fun. So I started sketching as usual and somehow I'm still Grandia inspired. Um, you know that pretty old RPG for the PlayStation 1? It was my first RPG when I was a kid and now my boyfriend recently started to play it. And I feel so inspired by that character design and all its details. It feels like having ideas again of how to design a character. I won't say like a good character, but at least not like a boring character. If you're following me on different social media, you might know that I often have problems of drawing interesting or detailed and especially matching clothes, which I don't want them to look basic. My brain just goes empty somehow. But seeing my boyfriend playing one of my all-time favorite games is so refreshing. I guess if I would ever get the Grandia art books, I just die because of too much happiness. But back to the topic. After sketching, I used a light box and just started inking directly. I like tracing my own stuff, to be honest. In this way, I can always do rough sketches, erase as many as I want and I don't need to worry about pencil marks or making mistakes, correcting mistakes. You know, I can feel more free and focus on creating rather than doing a perfect looking picture instantly which mostly can look stiff I think and what I really like is to keep my sketches sketches always look so dynamic and I personally like them more than perfectly finished artworks they look just so lively plus I will need most of my sketches for my second art book which I plan to do for mm, October, November, I think. And I want to make this one bigger with more art inside and more pages, etc. More colored pages. Yes. Um, so if you're interested in buying this, I can, um, I can recommend you to get my first art book, um, which you can find in my Etsy store. Link in the description like everything else is in the description, details to the materials I used and so on. Sketches don't need to be clean and there's no need to be afraid of messing it up because there is no messing up in a sketch. Sketches are a progress of creating great ideas. It's better to work on it until you think it's good enough than being tensed up and 
too afraid to experiment a bit. Art is about exploring, and sketching is an important part of it. It's the first way to get your ideas out of your head, through your hands and directly to the paper. And sketching helps you to improve your skills and learn more about yourself and what you could improve. Some of you will think, hä? She talks about rough sketches and making mistakes, but her sketch turns out perfectly. But to get there I used to do loads of practicing and sketching until drawing like this. And I still do a lot of mistakes. I can always see them after I finished a piece. I used to make sketches where I tried to draw pretty carefully. Because I always did my line work and coloration on the same paper. Instead of doing some sketches first, trying to draw different poses or perspectives. I used to draw or sketch always the same frontal poses. Because I want my sketch to be clean so I can continue doing a finished picture out of it. So what happens was that I get stuck and stop my own learning progress. And all the drawings always look the same. So whatever, someday I decided to stop thinking that way and just sketched like hell. And I didn't own a light box to trace my sketches. Not even this light box is... <laughs> Not even this light box is mine, I just borrowed it from my flatmate. However, I use different things to trace. I use the glass of a photo frame. Um, be careful, it's very dangerous. I used a glass table and placed a light below. So there's always a way to trace stuff without owning a light box. But I must say, it's pretty convenient to have one. Most of the time I show my sketching process in my videos, because I think without this process it looks kind of boring to me, like something is missing. And I don't want to make up like, everything I do goes well within the first pencil stroke, because it don't. Sketching is not perfect. Most of the time you will see an art video of someone who is coloring his finished line work, and you will feel like, I will never get as good as this artist. But it's not true. You're just not seeing his process of sketching and practicing. Okay, some artists just don't want to show how many times they start over and erase like hell, but there's no reason of being afraid showing this process. It's even helpful and encouraging young aspiring artists helps seeing what art is like before finishing a picture before I start doing the line art and coloring and that it's not like magic that it turns out perfectly just by its start. I want to encourage you that you all can become amazing artists if you just try to be open-minded, try different art stuff and most important, never stop creating and just love the process of creating things. So, my first thought on the colors I had to use was Okay, how should I do a well-balanced coloration with these? And this is also something I want to tell you. Finish your stuff, even if you just think, like I did when I start coloring with these markers I picked, I should start over again or abandon this piece. Because it doesn't look as good as I imagined before. Just continue, because giving up is most of the time not a good option if you want to improve. On the same hand, of course, it's important to know what your limits are, knowing when to stop. But <laughs> what do you have to lose if you just continue, seeing what could happen? I was surprised at the end that this piece turned out even better than I thought, even if I was skeptical at first. But my mindset was just relaxed and so it was not that hard uh, to get over my skeptical thoughts. Sometimes you need to come over your fear and just fight back. Sometimes you get a lot more creative in this process. Of course I used the brightest yellow tone to color the skin um, because, um, because I think that orange tone would just look terrible as a skin tone and so I had no other choice. Um, 
What I mainly did to get more shading was um, that I always waited until the parts I colored dried. So I can just paint over it and create a darker overlay. So in this way you won't have a soft looking shading. It's more harsh and sharp. And since it's a marker challenge, I want to make sure that I use all the colors and combine them. Which was a bit hard because, uh, because like I said in the twin marker video, they don't blend so well into each other. So you can't expect to have the same quality as, for example, Copic markers. But what I like at these is that it's pretty easy to go into a darker tone with a brighter one and it almost replaced it. It's almost working like um, the uh, blender of Copic, you know, the zero one. Overall, I thought it would look terrible, but it worked well together and I really liked how it turns out. I think she looks like uh, she's on fire or like she's dancing with fire or she is just fire. Of course the outlines give the whole picture that certain something and maybe it wouldn't go well without it. But hey, like I said in the beginning, there's no specific rule about this challenge, except for using three randomly choose markers. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to be subscribed to my channel. And most important, hit that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss any video I upload. So thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye!